Welcome to Academic Game Tutorials. In today's class we are going to study solidification of metals, under the topic solidification and cooling. We are studying fundamentals of metal casting, and metals for casting. We will cover all related topics one by one. Before starting, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, just click on subscribe, and press the bell icon. Here, we come up with new videos on different subjects, to make the academic studies easier for you. So, into the topic. Solidification of metals. Solidification, is the transformation of the molten metal back into the solid state. But, it differs depending on composition and purity. Pure metals freeze at a constant temperature while alloys, except for the eutectic compositions, freeze over a temperature range. Fluidity of pure metals are better than that of alloys. When solidification occurs over a temperature range, the partially solidified portion interferes with the flow of the liquid portion, hence reducing fluidity. 1. Solidification of pure metals. The process occurs at constant temperature over time. Local solidification time. The time over which actual freezing occurs. Total solidification time. The time taken between pouring and solidification. This figure shows the cooling curve for the pure metal during casting. Here, we can see the total solidification time is the time from the pouring temperature till the freezing is completed. And, the local solidification time is, the time from when the freezing begins, till the freezing is completed. During local solidification time, the metal's latent heat of fusion is released into the surrounding mold. Because of the chilling action of the mold wall, a thin skin of solid metal is initially formed at the interface immediately after pouring. Skin thickness increases to form a shell around the molten metal as solidification progresses inward toward the center of the cavity. Rate of freezing depends on heat transfer into mold, as well as the thermal properties of the metal. The metal which forms the initial skin has been rapidly cooled by the extraction of heat through the mold wall. This causes the grains in the skin to be fine, equiaxed, and randomly oriented. Further grain formation and growth occurs in a direction away from the heat transfer. The grains grow inwardly as needles of solid metal since the heat transfer is through skin and mold wall, slower cooling rate. This type of grain growth is referred to as dendritic growth. In this figure, we can see characteristic grain structure in a casting of a pure metal showing randomly oriented grains of small size near the mold wall, and large columnar grains oriented toward the center of the casting. 2. The solidification of most alloys, the process occurs over a temperature range. As temperature drops, freezing begins at the temperature indicated by the liquidus, and completed when the solidus is reached. The start of freezing is similar to that in pure metals, thin skin and dendritic structure. The figure, A, shows phase diagram for a copper nickel alloy system and the figure b shows associated cooling curve for a 50 percent nickel 50 percent copper composition during casting the mushy zone is a solid liquid region that has a soft consistency the slower the heat transfer and the wider the difference between liquidus and solidus the broader the mushy zone the liquid islands in the dendritic matrix solidify gradually as the temperature of the casting drops. The dendritic structure favors the metal with the highest melting point. In other words, there would become a composition imbalance between the metal that has solidified and the remaining molten metal, variations in chemical composition throughout the casting. This leads to segregation of elements in the casting, called dingot segregation. Assuming an equal alloy, we obtain a grain structure as this figure where, the comparatively lighter area shows copper rich and, nickel poor, regions. And the comparatively darker area shows nickel rich and, copper poor, regions. This figure shows the characteristic grain structure in an alloy casting, showing segregation of alloying components in center of casting. 3. The solidification of eutectic alloys, in these alloys, the solidus and liquidus are at the same temperature. Hence, the process occurs at constant temperature over time. For example the eutectic composition in phase C equilibrium phase diagram. In the eutectic reaction, a liquid transforms into two solids. Here, 
In the eutectic reaction liquid is transformed into austenite which is represented by gamma, and cementite represented by Fe3C. In iron carbon system, ion, 4.3 weight percentage carbon, is the eutectic composition. 1147 degree Celsius, is the eutectic temperature. Whether the casting is pure metal or alloy, solidification takes time. The total solidification time, is the time required for casting to solidify after pouring, insured TST. The total solidification time depends on size and shape of casting by relationship known as Voronoff's rule. TST, equals to, Cm, into, V divided by A, whole to the power N. Where, TST is the total solidification time, expressed in minutes. V is the volume of the casting cubic centimeters. A is the surface area of the casting, square centimeters. N, is an exponent usually equal to, 2. And, Cm is the mold constant, minute per square centimeter. Voronoff's rule indicates that the higher the volume to surface ration, the more slowly the casting will solidify. In the riser design, it is made so that the volume to surface ratio is higher than that of the casting, that's why the riser solidifies after the main casting. So, we have discussed in details about solidification of metals, under the topic solidification and cooling. Thank you.